Welcome, Black Mambas. As you may know, I am Citizen Kane and the Black Mamba Commissioner. I am Molson Canadian, one of the original six. So today here we have, you know, a pretty pretty special day. We're having one of our first actual webcasts. Fantasy hockey. Fantasy discussion. hockey webcast for the Black Mamas League. So a couple of things we're going to be discussing today is, as you may know, over the past few days, a lot has been happening in this league. Mm -hmm. Very, very many trades. So that's what, yeah. you know, some may be good, some may be bad. We're not sure, but that's what we're here to discuss today. But before we get into those discussions, you know, just want to go back to the previous video that we uploaded. You know, got a lot of ridicule from that video. You did. A lot, got, a lot of people. You offended were, some people. You know, I, apparently made a few people mad you know they didn't like the eating you know we i must say i you guess know, we I, weren't prepared i don't know we're i thought sorry, we wouldn't you know, good work we just you know came saw the creative video it was a good video so we figured yeah. we had to post it drew was totally unsurprised and did not prepare and we thought drew was so good we had to just post it um so now that we've gone into that and you know had that little thing uh the next thing i want to go on to is you know discussing some of these traits so um I mean, With having the commissioner here, one of the guys who actually made the trade, I kind of want to get a little insight of what okay. and why he made the trade he did. You know, I tell myself every year, I'm, I'm, this is the year I'm not going to make a trade. Um, and then every year I make a trade. And oftentimes I feel like I make the wrong one. This one I feel most confident in. I've never gone after a stud. I've never had Ilya Kovalchuk. This gives me an opportunity to go after that. I've had Alexander Ovechkin draft him first overall, uh, and I traded him to Roberto. I traded him to RIP for Roberto Luongo. Um, Roberto Luongo later got injured, and obviously Ovechkin is Ovechkin, so I had to bite the bullet there. However, with this trade, with Kobe, um, and knowing that Backstrom's backup and Harding belong to Hotland Thrashers, it's important that our league stays as competitive as possible. And I had to look at my division and say, what is going to get me or give me the best opportunity to win? And I felt like Kovalchuk. So based on all that you just said, do you feel this trade is what's going to help put you onto the next year? I mean, you look and you know, you're at the top of the stats right now. You're at the top of the leaderboard. You know, you're okay. doing all things right right now. You think this is going to make you even that much better? That's a tough question because for me, I don't think this is the trade that's going to get me there. I think when I, after one trade, I really want, you know, I want to go after another one. I, so, I, I want to put together a better team. So can I uh, maybe say that you're kind of taking on a little daddy mentality, you know? You're starting to get that trade and buzz. I feel like, you know, once you get the one trade, it's like a drug. And you need to go after. You need to keep looking what's out there. You never know, you know, what is... What so, is your future? For everyone else in the Black Mamas, is the Citizen Kane open to all trading right now? Open to all trading. I'm ready. Nobody has offered me anything. I had to offer a trade to Hotland in order to get who I wanted. Um, but now that we're talking about trades, now that we're talking about is a trade going to put, a, you know, in this case, is my trade going to put me over the top? I don't think so. But are, out of the other three trades, do any stand out to you as game changers? You know, I do see one that could be potentially pretty game-changing. You know, it's definitely, uh, it changes away from this manager's, you know, philosophy and how he builds his teams. Um, but between the Red Army and Blades of Gory, they made okay. a big trade that could benefit both teams in both ways. You got Red Army, just Alville, and Jonathan Taves, and Glory, Blades of Glory, and Brad Richards. I mean... Blades of Glory, you know, definitely could have used a little bit better goaltending, which definitely helps him. While Red Army is getting rid of goalie, getting rid of a goalie, and really going to this high octane offense now, but he's trading away from this three goalie system he always Everybody used to used have. To do three goalies. I, it's definitely changing. I mean, where's this coming from? Could be the shortened season. It could just be a lot of teams are looking to have a competitive offense and now with two divisions you have to look at not only what's going to get you in the playoffs which means how are you going to fare not only in your division but against everybody else people in the spartan division managers and you know my division as fellow athenians we know that outside of hitting that top seed in your division you're competing with everybody else in the league it's not just you're in a division fighting against those people you are fighting against them for that top spot but it's important that with this evolution, teams are being mindful of what they need to do. Oh, we got oh, We got the Red Army on the phone. Is this the Red Army? 
Oh, uh, lady, Black Mama, we have Red Army on the phone with here with us right now. Uh, today, Red Army, we want to discuss a little bit about some of the things that have happened over the past uh, past few days. Um, as being one of the managers in this league that has made a trade, uh, can you maybe give us a little uh, bit of your opinion on why you made the trade that you did? Yeah, I well, I made a trade. I went into the draft with drafting three strong goalies that way at some point during the year if I felt that I needed that offensive push that I would, you know, have the upper hand, have that goalie that I needed. If I needed goals, assists, and power play points, then I feel like uh, Chase and Palmerville are off to great starts, and that could be something that I could really use in my offense. Brad, you got the commissioner here, Citizen Kane. I think you're familiar Question, you, you're moving to this two-goalie set. Like you said, you got Taves and Pommelville that are going to bring that extra punch that you need on the offensive side. Do you feel like that's where the league is heading with this two-goalie system and you know max out your starts, try to get as much offensive talent out there as you can? Uh, I actually think that you see a lot of goal. I think you see a lot of trades for goalies, one, because since we expanded to 14 teams this season, more teams has had a lack of goalies after the draft. A lot of the other guys coming into the league, you know, like I know uh, Blake the Glory told me that he overlooked the relevance of goalie statistics and went with that power offense. I think new people to the league don't know how much goalies that help and that they did not draft the appropriate. I wouldn't necessarily say that teams are going for a higher octane Often, I just think that since we have you know two two additional teams in the league, that you know goalies are more scarce, especially especially you know the starting high powered goalies. So that's why I grabbed three in the beginning, so I could trade one of the ways for a better offense if I needed to be, and it proved to me that I needed a better offense. That's why I decided to make my trade. All right, well, Red Army, we're going to have to let you, cut you off, and we really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. So uh, why don't you tell everybody bye, and we'll let you go so you can get off on your way. All right, everybody, Black Mamba, be safe this week, play the right people, Q-Town, you dropped Mike Fisher, Carrie Underwood would not be happy about that, and also, Daddy, trade rape in the league. Hey, two down. Four more to go. All right. You guys take care. All right. Thanks, you too. As we had to wait for Red Army to get a get a couple last comments in there. Well, that's fine. You know, you got to get the last word in sometimes. Um, but that kind of last comment that we touched on, you know, Daddy is making a lot of trades. There's only four teams out there that haven't traded yet. We're in week four, beginning of week four. There's only four teams out there that haven't traded. We got Molson Canadian. We have the Swine who just tied Two-Tone. Two-Tone makes our third, and finally our fourth, Motor City Mad Men. Now, out of those four, which one do you think needs the trade the most? You know, I looked over those four. I originally thought the swine. You know, I looked at his stats. He was placing in the bottom of the league in all the categories. But then I went and looked at his team, and he had an impressive team. It's just his Three players, starting goalies. players were not producing. Mm -hmm. So I don't think... The Swine has to make any shakeups yet. I, I think his players just need to come around, but hopefully he's not stuck in that bind where he's waiting too long Stay and then the it's course. too late. So, I mean, just keep an eye on it there. The team I really think that does need to make a change is Motor City Mad Men. You know, he's okay. got a pretty decent offense, you know. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I played him week one, Stamkos. Just yeah, dominant. I mean, he didn't didn't put up uh, that great of points last week, but he's got a pretty good offense, and I got lucky with Stamkos only putting up one assist. But what I think this team could really benefit on, here could be my advice for the week, is that Motor City Mad Men could ship Vokun and one of his offensive players and bring back a true starting goalie, not someone who's backing up to Marc-Andre Fleury. You bring in a starting, decent goalie, and it'll help Motor City Mad Men to capture a few more goalie stats, which he seems to be lacking week in and week out. And if he does this, it might just help put him back towards that top-tier opponents again. On the outside looking in could be on the inside looking out. Mm-hmm. So, any well, opinions? I would say that's some good advice for the week. Um, 
first and foremost, thank you for all those who decide to watch the first interview. We hope we can continue this trend. And uh, as a testament to the Red Army, you know, make sure you play the right people this week. And uh, best of luck week four and in the weeks to follow. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Over now.